acquiring land, getting special use permits, and glamping as a ministry. Oh, the questions owners have in getting their glamping operations going. Let me give some answers. Hey, my name is Chris Jube. I'm the Glamping Guy Online, and I'm in the tail end of my nearly free class, Easy Entry to a Glamping Business. The fourth and final video launches on Friday, and all four videos will be available for only a short time. This is where I open up free consultations, and I connect with, with my students, and I answer questions that they may have. And if you're a landowner looking to get into the sexiest asset class in real estate called glamping, then get registered at glampingguy.com today. These videos will be only available for a couple of weeks, so don't delay. Today I'm answering students from Texas, California, and Thailand. Let's start with a question from Jose in Plano, Texas, who just now finding the perfect piece of property to, to acquire. He says, we have narrowed our list to three properties and have started visiting them and underwriting the numbers. There's already an existing container home on the top property we're looking at, but the asking price is too high, I think. I'm currently doing research and calling county folks and the zoning and permitting aspects of my due diligence. Jose Plano, Texas. Sounds like you're doing all the right things, Jose. Most people who contact me already have a piece of land and they're trying to make it work out, which is a hundred times harder than just finding it right the first time. I've walked both paths in my journey. The first was my home that I lived in for 20 years before starting a glamping operation. Now that has been a tougher journey in that I needed to convince the county of my special use. And I have a neighbor who is doing all she can to rally other neighbors against it. Now I'll make it through this opposition, but it definitely is draining. I was much more strategic in my second property. I had a plan in mind and an objective. Long story short, my second property is doing swimmingly well, not only permitting, but my neighbors, they love glamping and financing and banks. I mean, it couldn't really couldn't be better. The lesson here, Jose, is to do exactly what you're doing. Research first and then follow what you find. It's a smoother path than all sorts of things in life, especially land and glamping development. The next question comes from Justin in California all about special use permits. He says, I found a property that I really like that allows for a campground with a special use permit. I am now staring at the building permit application for the California Department of Housing and Community Development. This document is incredibly complex, from plot site plans to drainage and grading plans to electrical plans and calculations, etc. I have no idea where to start. Who do I even hire to draft all these documents? I feel like I've hit a wall. Any help you can send my way would be greatly appreciated. Justin in California. Now, Justin is someone I consulted back in January, and it's great news to hear that he's moving forward with a campground designation. And the fact that this is a special use option in his county is encouraging to hear, too, as most counties consider campgrounds a specific zone all on its own. What Justin is discovering is that a special use process is, it is incredibly daunting, but it's not impossible. You need to pop the hood and figure the engine out, one document upload at a time. In my journey, I was able to clunk through my first special use largely on my own, but I had help from three people. One was a former county commissioner and a lawyer friend of mine. He actually lives in the same creek as I do. Second was a developer friend, someone who developed actual neighborhoods in the community who knew the intricacies of the planning department. And thirdly was a custom home builder friend of mine who had more knowledge in building permits than I did. I guess that's my encouragement to Justin. Connect with some people who understand these things in your area. I'm in review with, the, with my county right now. And I have since hired a much more expensive but much more thorough legal team to make sure my glamping operation does succeed. Albeit the stakes are much higher now, now that I'm invested in two properties with multiple units. Things were much simpler when I started off, like you, Justin. But it does pay to invest in the guidance you need to successfully launch your business. And I'm glad Justin emailed me because I noticed he was not registered for my easy entry to the glamping business class. I encouraged him to do so, and I saw that he did. So good to have you in class, Justin. Third letter comes from Corey in Thailand. Nice to have an international presence in class. He wrote to me and said, I have a dream vision drive to get this started with a desire to fund our ministry and other organizations here in Thailand. We have some savings that could get us started, but I'm working on creating more revenue streams to fund this idea. Corey in Thailand. The ministry aspect of Corey's message is, has me pondering several things. Interesting note, the very first Christian ministry was the Apostle Paul's missions to the Romans and Gentiles in the very first century AD. 
Guess what Paul did as a side hustle? Clamping. He was a tent maker. <laughs> and here we are, 2,000 years later, trying to tie ministry in with tent making. Oh, the eternal full circle here. I hope you find a way to make glamping work, Corey, because the profit margins are very large in glamping and it could fund a ministry or, or good work that you're doing there in Thailand. However, let me challenge you a little bit with this interesting tidbit of information. For me, I have volunteered more as a glamping host than I ever have in my entire life. Seriously, as a volunteer in my community. I'm actually receiving an award on Friday as Volunteer of the Year Award in my local Chamber of Commerce. This reflects the freedom and fulfillment I talk about in class. I volunteer for a local food shelf to help distribute food to needy families. I volunteer for a local newspaper and report uh, in the town hall. I volunteer at a home, homeschool co-op and train academic speakers and debaters, still my little pastime of, of being a high school teacher. I volunteer my neighborhood as somewhat of a director of news in our non-HOA neighborhood. In a very real way, glamping has freed me up to give, give, give to others. And in a, in a funny way, I've received so much more. You may find, Corey, that glamping opens up more of a volunteer and ministerial opportunity than you imagine. Furthermore, if you open up a glamping operation there in Thailand, you'll probably connect with the locals, which is exactly what you want to do in ministry. Glamping could be the side hustle you need. How perfect is that? Keep the questions coming, students. I love answering questions from fellow landowners who are interested in getting involved in the sexiest asset class in real estate called glamping. If you haven't gotten into easy entry to a glamping business yet, go online to glampingguy.com and get registered. My final video releases Friday, but you could still catch up and watch the first three videos that are there. So if you're a landowner and wants to get into this ministry, I mean business called glamping, then do so today by going to glampingguy.com and getting registered. I'm Chris Jube, the Glamping Guy. We'll see you in class.